Who of us does not want to run a power efficient home server or home server lab? If you're like me, you don't have unlimited funds to simply throw away with a power hungry server. Now, today we're going to talk about an extremely cool way to save power on your home server or your home server lab. And we're going to let automation do the heavy lifting for us. So stick around, let's dive into simple and easy automation to turn your power hungry server into a low power server or home lab. Much like leaving your lights on in your home is not very efficient, and it's that period of time that usually equates to significant costs, the same analogy we could apply to servers. We could use a power hungry server for just a couple of hours and not notice a whole lot of cost. However, it's running that power hungry server. 24 by 7 by 365 where you see the drastic increase in power consumption or what you see on your utility bill. I'm going to introduce you guys to a trick that I have been using to drive down energy costs even with relatively efficient servers and especially if you're running very power hungry servers this can reap dividends. Well, much like running virtual machines in the cloud, we have options for the auto shutdown functionality where we can actually schedule periods of time where those virtual machines are powered down. And that way we are not racking up those costs when we are not using those virtual machines or when they're not needed. Let's apply the same principle to our home lab. Using a combination of out of band management, AKA IPMI or IDRAC or other acronyms if you're using a different server vendor, we can essentially control the power state of our physical server. Now, if you're running a virtualization hypervisor such as VMware vSphere, Hyper-V, or other solution, we can use automation to effectively either power down VMs gracefully or perhaps suspend those VMs and then chain in the commands that we need to power down the physical server. We do the reverse of that when we're bringing the server back up. We use the remote management tools to power up the server. Once the server is up and running, then we can essentially start or power on our virtual machines and we're up and running again. Supermicro has an out-of-band management utility that is an IPMI interface, meaning that it is completely out-of-band where you can control the power management of the server as well as remote in and view the console as you can see here. I have a connection to one of the ESXi servers in the home lab. Also, in addition to the IPMI interface, Supermicro has a tool called the SMC IPMI tool that is a command line tool allowing you to interact with your Supermicro IPMI interface. Dell has similar tools. I think it's the RAC ADM tool that allows you to interact with the iDRAC interface on Dell PowerEdge servers. And many of the other server vendors have something similar. What this allows us to do is create a script that is coordinated between our vSphere environment and the Supermicro environment. We can essentially shut down or suspend all of the virtual machines running on this particular lab host. After that process completes successfully, we can then interact with the power management functionality on our Supermicro server and have the server gracefully shut down. I have an example of a very simple script that I've created which allows just that workflow. As you can see in the very top of the script, we are creating a connection to our vCenter server. We are getting a list of all of the virtual machines that are powered on on that ESXi host. We're setting that to a very after we read from that text file, then we are simply cycling through all of the virtual machines that are found in the running vms.txt file and suspending those VMs. Now, you may wonder, what is the advantage of suspending a VM over shutting a VM down? Well, it depends on the workload whether suspend is a viable option. However, it just simply picks up where it left off with the suspended VM. 
after this script cycles through all of the virtual machines that are in the powered on state, then we call the Supermicro SMC IPMI tool and we connect to the server and power down the server with a soft shutdown. At the very bottom of the script, we are simply sending an email letting us know that the process has completed and that the host has indeed been shut down. Now that we have gone through the script and actually see what it actually will do once it coordinates between vSphere and the Supermicro, let's actually run the script and see how it behaves. I'm just simply calling from a PowerShell prompt, the PowerShell script that we just looked at in Visual Studio Code. The script kicks off and as you can see we are starting to suspend virtual machines. As we look at the ESXi host client, we already see virtual machines starting to go into the suspended state. And we can continue to monitor this as the output will show which VMs are actually suspended as the script runs. Now thinking about the timing, the for loop in the script is going to roll through and make sure that all VMs have completed the suspend process before it moves to the shutdown of our Supermicro server. And we'll be able to monitor that with the connection that we have to the IPMI console interface. As you can see, the command to shut down the Supermicro server has begun and we have the send mail message has sent us an email. The Supermicro server, as you can see, just powered down. So we effectively safely suspended all the virtual machines and powered down the Supermicro lab host. Now let's look at the reverse process. So when we want to power up our lab server, and power on the virtual machines. We're doing the same thing. We're connecting to our vCenter server. We are looking at the running vms.txt, which was created from the power off process. So we know these are the exact virtual machines that were running on the server. Now we reverse the process. So we are powering on the via the IPMI interface, the Supermicro lab host. We're going to allow this to have five minutes of sleep time. So we want our ESXi server to be fully booted, ready to begin the process to power on the VMs. And obviously we need vCenter to recognize that the host is actually connected and able to be managed by vCenter. So we're, we're giving this a moderate five minutes of sleep time. So the server is booted, the agents are running, and vCenter is able to connect successfully to the ESXi host. After the five minute interval, then we start looping through the running vms.txt and we're powering on those virtual machines. I'm also introducing a 10 second delay in this loop. So after it powers on the first virtual machine, it waits 10 seconds before it goes to the next server in the list. And this is just so that we don't fully saturate the storage layer. When you have multiple virtual machines booting up, you're going to have a lot of I.O. that hits the data store all at once. So this staggering process allows us to just stagger that enough to offset some of that I.O. load. And then like we did with the power off script, we are just simply sending ourselves an email. We're now going to test the reverse process, powering up the ESXi host and then starting the virtual machines back. So I have the labpowerup.ps1 script ready to run. I'm going to execute the script and we are connected to vCenter. We have initiated the power on process and we see our Supermicro server now powering on. Again, we're going to have that five minute interval of time where we're allowing the Supermicro server to fully post and then fully boot and allow vCenter to reestablish that connectivity with this ESXi host. The five minute pause has ended and so now we are actually starting virtual machines. Now that we have our scripts formulated and tested, all we have left to do is to schedule those scripts on a management workstation. So if you have a workstation that exists outside of your home lab that you leave up and running, that workstation can drive this process 
or if you have a single server that you want to leave up and running 24 by 7 and power down other servers, you could, of course, have a workload on that server that acts as the management workstation driving these automated processes. Well, I hope you guys have really enjoyed this walkthrough of how with using automation, we can actually see real benefits in terms of power consumption in the home lab. And I know in many geographic regions, that is certainly a concern right now. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, keep on home labbing, keep on learning. Hope you guys stay safe out there and I will see you guys soon.